Thanks for tuning in. If it's your first time, welcome. If you're a persistent offender, then of course, welcome back. I recently installed a Motor Gadget M Unit Blue on my CB750 Cafe Racer build. And in my usual ramblings, uh, that went on for several episodes. Uh, yes, I have episodes. So here's the good news if you tuned in to find out how to install a Motor Gadget M Unit Blue. I'm going to try and distill those into one concise episode. So buckle up and um, here goes. And I have been doing some reading. Mm. For the first part of the installation, obviously we're going to need some fairly stroppy wiring, some fairly thick gauge. I think this might be good for the positive. This is a bit OTT for the earth. Looks like it's off a car battery. Uh, that might do. I don't know. I might need to take a trip down to Ace to see what happens. Out. I already had some, so that's rather good. Start from the positive terminal to our fuse, which is down there somewhere. Nice little short cable for that then. And then another one off the other terminal on the fuse, which is there, to uh, our M unit. That'll be that boy there. Should probably be using red wire for the positive, but I'm going to be using these to identify whether it's positive or ground at the ends, like so. So that's crimped on there, and uh, we're just going to pop that sleeve over there. Nice and high up, actually. And uh, then we're going to use a hairdryer. Mm-hmm. High-powered hairdryer. These boys are just big enough to start stripping the sheath off. I'd have to finish it off manually. There you go. Now we have power here. No, we don't. We have our earth cable uh, cut and um, double-ended. And as you may have come to expect from me by now, uh, something a little unconventional in terms of uh, the situation with the earth to the frame. Hmm, I had a cunning plan. Yes, indeed, uh, somewhat of an extension cable. Um, I told you it was unconventional. It's an earth, so it'll be fine. What could possibly go wrong? So, that will bolt onto the uh, negative terminal on the battery. This will bolt onto the negative terminal of the uh, blue unit. Explain in case you're interested. <laughs> This is going to the positive terminal of the battery. Uh, it goes into the fuse, and this goes to M unit, and comes back to here. So we're going to have to chop this and put a terminal on there. And then the negative is this new, also new, super flexible, cut, crimped, and wired in. We are ready to rock and roll, I think. We're just waiting for a longer bolt for the earth. Ground. And you thing. may have noticed I'm using a 30 amp fuse, standard kind of 30 amp for a motorcycle. Uh, Motor Gadget actually recommend a 40, so we'll see. If it keeps tripping out, then um, I guess we'll have to uh, upgrade it a little bit. Um, it's on, erring on the safe side, so I don't think that's a bad idea. Power to the Honda. Blimey, are you still watching? Yes, it's going to be step by painful step. Let's try and get the headlight working. Because that would be nice and simple, right? So, issue number one is that we have uh, 12 slots. Times two, but they're in and out. And only six colours of wires. Probably a good idea to order some more colours. Back in a minute. simple so we're starting with the ignition wire uh, and um, I'm using what we got because I haven't ordered any new stuff yet cut it plenty long because uh, I'm figuring it's got to go to our uh, yeah not that um, oh no that start button um, no that's something different so it has got to go to something like this I guess, except we're not looking to be using that. 
Possibly one of these. Possibly nothing at all, apart from a mobile phone. I'm not quite sure how that all works yet. I should probably read the instructions again. I mean, can you tell I've only read a page or two? I think I showed you. There's quite a lot of it. Anyway, so that's that. These clips are pretty impressive. Uh, good grip and uh, very easy to use. Dissimilar from these that you know if you've watched any of my other videos that I really like. Um, yeah, just really simple to use and reuse. Low beam and high beam again, giving me plenty of scope for routing of wires. Duly noted. And while we're all plugging it all in here, uh, we can start getting rid of some of this trash. Yeah, like all of this. This is the turn signals and uh, the rear light as labeled. So all that can go. And we trace it all the way up here and get rid of it all there too. This is a good feeling. It's like clearing out an old cupboard. Uh, it's about as interesting too. Uh, just one by one we'll be shedding wires and leaving ourselves with what we need from the original loom. Uh, when the hell is he going to plug something in? I hear you ask. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm not exactly sure where to start. Yes, I'm looking at this. I'm guessing we need to start here. Ignition lock. Which goes to power. Whereas everything else goes to ground. Okay, so quick theory test. Uh, hooked up the rear light, orange, to the front light, actually. The running light, which is also orange. So there it is. And it goes up here, and it's wired in there to the white, which is the running light. And the earth is earthed. As far as we know, I'm going to retest that. Yeah, but basically it's not working, which is what I assumed, because I haven't done the ignition lock. So I'm guessing we have to do that first. Because although the unit powers up as soon as you flip the switch and it gets power, I'm guessing that that, i.e. the ignition, is the final solution. Yes, that one there, uh, um, despite the fact that the whole unit's got power. Some new coloured wiring and some thinner stuff for the, um, the inputs, that side. Because they're tiny. By the way, you're going to need some seriously small screwdrivers. Because those are about 3 mil across, if that. Anyway, as you can see, we're getting there. And I also found this super useful um, simplified wiring diagram just for kind of wiring in everything apart from all the obvious. Uh, so all the important stuff like stators and coils and things. Let's start with that lock which is the red wire in the very last orifice and uh, we got that looping up here and we got that going into this switch simple on off switch yeah we're not using the ignition keys uh, they're down there they will be redundant and that as i say is the only one that goes to power so what we've done is take a, another wire off the positive terminal this side down there, that blue wire. And I've chosen blue just because the uh, the other wire on the switch is blue, so it matches that. So we're going to temporarily run that along here and plug it in, like so. So we've got power going up the blue into the switch, out the switch on the red, down to our lock which should, in theory, bring power to that unit to then distribute wherever. And to test that, I'm going to use one of these dodgy old little red lights, um, which we've got earthed uh, to the frame. And then the other wire goes to the aux, which is for the rear light. And anything else that you want to come on immediately you switch the bike on so we'll put that running light on there as well uh, once we've got it all working i.e that running light there the halo so first up let's flick our 30 amp fuse 
we have power to the unit. All right, let's see what happens. So in theory, we switch this on and we get a red light. Uh, no, we do have lights here though, that's interesting. Well, I guess, um, my bad, put it in the wrong aisle. Um, so now we have those lights were indicating which circuits had power. So now we have a light on the auxiliary down here. And uh, we have a rear light. Yeah. How about that? And the other one that has power is the red circuit, which is the ignition system, uh, which is uh, good news. That means if we hook that up, in theory, we should have a start button. We're not going to do that yet. So we're just going to test, we'll show you, uh, that both those front sockets now have power. So they're your permanent power as soon as the ignition is turned on. So we've got 13 volts out of there. Whereas the one that I had the rear light in, which was this boy, which I also thought came on with everything, we got nothing. Zip. Let's try that theory with the headlight. So now I'm running the orange wire up front, plugged into the white wire of the headlight. So in theory, when we hit the switch, we should have our running light. Bingo. So that means we can get rid of this. Yep. Just putting some different connectors on the rear light because we're going to test that. And obviously, um, they're connected to the, it's connected to the seat. So every time you take the seat off, you're going to have to disconnect these. And uh, that may look excessive. Yeah, excessive amount of wiring. Neat little trick I learned. Cut it long, bend it over, double it up. Like so, especially when it's this kind of thin wire. So rejig the outs to match the headlamp. So uh, high beam is now green, and low beam is now brown. And over here, we've got a switch. It says push button or switch for light. Mm, well, we've got switch. That switch there, that one. Alrighty, let's try running it through the M unit. I'm not so confident at this point that anything will come on. Alright, so we're all hooked up on this side. Uh, let me run you through that. White off the auxiliary, driving light comes on as soon as you switch the whole system on. Uh, green is high beam, low beam is brown. Over here, we just got one switch. And this is what I, I don't really understand. Push button or switch light. All going to ground. So our black wire, which was previously to the positive on the little test battery, is now going to ground. Our white switch wire from the M unit is going into that terminal and both wires from the switch are also going into that terminal. And I don't understand this. Nice engine paint job, isn't it? Let's give it a whirl, see what happens. Okay, main power on. Running light on. Headlight switch. Wow, we got headlight. And beam. Oh, it worked for a split second there and then it went out. Hold on. I think this may be just something to do with the settings within the M unit. So let me show you what's going on. It doesn't matter which way I flick it, something comes on. Right, so that's your main headlight. And then when you go to full beam, it comes on and then everything goes off. Uh, so I guess that's a setting in the M unit itself. Headlight. Flip it the other way, high beam, off. That could be uh, not useful on a dark country lane. Anyway, we've got headlights, that's a bloody miracle for stars. Actually, that's more confusing still, because if I turn it off, it doesn't. Now it does. I guess it's to do with the fact it's a switch and not a push button. Basically, uh, the M unit likes uh, just momentary switches. So you just push it and it doesn't stay in and that, that tells it to do something. 
guess I've got to program the unit to tell it it's got a hard switch rather than a um, memory button thing. Mm. For the time being, I've used the original uh, cables there, wires, for the switch itself that comes off the lever. And one side is earth, and the other side of the switch goes into there, which is our purple wire. And it goes in there. Our purple wire there. And uh, yes, the corresponding purple wire is then connected to our brake light. Uh, there. Which is that boy there. So let's see what happens. Systems on. We have light. We have running light. And... We have a brake light. Well, that was a bit too easy. I'm beginning to like this blue unit. Now I just got to get the damn phone to talk to it. So to pair the unit up to your phone, uh, you need to have the horn and the starter button uh, all wired in, which we haven't got yet. Uh, but luckily, I do have this switch kicking around uh, as a spare, um, both momentary buttons, which is what the M unit requires. Talking of which, uh, I've sussed out the headlight situation. Yeah, this just requires one signal to turn the lights on. And this dual switch is confusing the situation. So with this switch, it's a little bit contrived, but let me try and run you through it. So, turn the system on, we have our running light. One click and then back to the off position gives you your headlight. And then for high beam, same deal. One click back to the off position and it stays on. If you leave it, it goes off. As you can see, I've actually wired up the real back light um, situated in the seat. What I have discovered is that it's quite difficult to jam two wires into one slot. Basically, I wanted the, uh, the running light, our halo light at the front and our rear running light to come on out of the same auxiliary slot. The wires themselves fit in, it's the actual, the casing, the, uh, the plastic casing is a little bit too thick. Maybe a thinner gauge wire would work just as well. Uh, or maybe I'll join them before I actually plug them into the blue unit. But it's a bit of a tight squeeze. Well, the good news is I managed to pair the unit with my phone and it wasn't quite as contrived as some people let on. I did have to remove the negative terminal. Um, from the battery uh, to the unit for a period of 10 seconds. I did have to restart my phone, uh, but other than that, it basically just paired up. No holding horn buttons for three seconds, no holding starter buttons for 10 seconds. Uh, none of the stuff that I've seen on previous videos, which I was anticipating. I had my horn button and start button all jerry-rigged, ready to go, and didn't need them. Uh, you'll notice it's flashing now because um, I have set the distance for the keyless whatever um, on my phone to be very short. So now all that's left is the important bit: make the damn thing go. I haven't got into the settings. I changed the handlebar controls to configuration C, most Japanese and European motorcycles, and that means that the light, as you can see there, low high beam is on a switch rather than the push button. It's still a bit weird, so turn the machine on. There's our running light, nice orange light. Turn the headlight on, and actually it goes to full beam straight away. And then turn it into the off position, and it goes to the low beam. And either way, it goes to high beam. So once it's on, you can't turn it off unless you turn the whole machine off. Which is still a bit funky, but I suppose it's better than the last option. Yes, we have a new diagram uh, direct from the Moto Gadget website. Um, infinitely larger image than that, and uh, not dissimilar from that. So we're going to be hooking up the important stuff like the starter and the regulator and the uh, coils. And the ignition unit. What is the ignition unit? It's this thing over here with the coils. 
as opposed to that thing over there, which is the lock. So we've got our spark units on the left, which are kind of a early days ECU. We've got our ignition coils on the right and going off to the plugs. And then in the middle, we got a pulse generator, which I'm assuming is something like a flux capacitor, but I haven't found one. So here's the advantage of using a cheese grater um, for your electrical tray, because it's got lots of holes in it. So there's the two starter motor wires coming down to eventually meet the starter solenoid. Not quite brave enough to hook anything up yet. It's power cable itself here now at the moment will also go through the same hole to get power from the positive terminal over here not quite in focus oh i know progress is painfully slow isn't it at least it's entertaining though right um i found a, a much better complete wiring diagram which is amazing i'll leave a link to it in the description um thanks to marshall yeah brilliant anyway uh, and it made me rethink a lot of things also watching another video uh, on how to do this so uh, what's happening is oh, I think we're going to relocate all this cobblers i.e. the rectifier regulator and the spark units while it was a neat idea we'll put them elsewhere and that I think will fit nicely there mm. except upside down obviously like, like so this is where I'm going to put these on the bottom of that crossbar there. I'm going to just use um, some seriously strong sticky tape. Let's get sticking. Again, uh, cleaned all the surfaces with this first. See if it's still there later on in the day. Now we've got nice new wiring. Let's get this rectifier regulator plumbed in. So it goes to that second slot there on the blue unit. So that's our black wire out of the rectifier regulator down into that second slot there. Our green wire is the earth, so that will go onto that earth terminal on the blue unit. That will reach and fit nicely. I know, minor short there on the posi terminal. Oops. And then that leaves our red and white, uh, which we've got red at the moment which will mount into the top of the solenoid. All right, we're getting this Earths from the spark units, which are now um, nicely under the frame. Uh, I've actually run forward because we had this earth um, that comes off here, actually. There it is. That's a good earth up by the coils. The rest of that wiring from the spark units comes down to this, which goes to the ignition and um, that's a bit I'm still confused about. Earth successfully terminated to uh, ground control over there, um, reasonably far away from the positive, hopefully. So what was confusing me with these um, spark units was that there were only three wires and on the diagram there's effectively like a four-way split. So we've got the black and white going up to the coils here uh, we got the black and white into each of the spark units and now in theory this is correct we've got our ignition wire coming out of the blue unit doo -doo 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 -doo. there in terminal 4 terminal 4 on Marshall's diagram going doo -doo 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 to the spark units into the what was the black and white as you can see underneath over here on the motor gadget diagram, uh, terminal 4 ignition goes to that kind of stuff, which I guess is what we're doing. So I suppose it wasn't that complicated after all. All we've got to do is hook this up, because uh, that's still dangling around in the breeze. Hook our yellow outputs to the top of the start solenoid along with um, this boy from the rectifier regulator and then on the input side as I say this yellow wire needs to come up and start talking to the starter button up there alrighty we are all wired in at the solenoid so we've got our positive 
uh, main battery positive coming up to the positive terminal on the battery there we've got uh, two yellows out of focus uh, coming up to the start on the blue unit we got our red and white coming up all the way to our red and white on the uh, regulator rectifier and of course we got our um, power going off to our start layer Oh, I should uh, explain at this point that I had not noticed or noted uh, what went where on this plug here yet. Um, so that's why this initial test didn't work. Here, I have found a simple solution, and we like simple solutions. Thanks to Revival Motorcycles. Yes, they sell a universal starter solenoid. Uh, we all know how universal things work. We shall see when it turns up. But most importantly, it comes with a plug ready and wiring diagram for an M unit. 50 bucks well spent, I think. Good news, we have a small package. Apparently all good things come in small packages. It's our universal starter solenoid from Revival Motorcycles. So we've got the actual solenoid itself, complete with a couple of fuses there cover for it that's nice and uh, some more fuses and what have we got in there dude yes waterproof connectors and as promised uh, wonderful clear instructions on how to wire it into your blue unit and everything else Yes, folks, you heard it here first. Houston, we have ignition. More importantly, we've got a damn starter motor. Connected. So, my thanks to Revival uh, for making life a little bit simpler, although um, this seems to be superfluous. Uh, that'll be this red wire here, which is not connected to anything. Because it's live, it's actually a hot live wire. I know this. Because I had stripped it and I knocked it out in the frame and sparks everywhere. So I went back to um, Blaupunk, uh, no, Motor Gadgets diagram and um, we already had a red wire going up to the ignition coil and ignition unit. We already have connections off the battery terminal on the blue unit to all this stuff. So I didn't see any point in connecting that to, uh, to the battery terminal on the blue unit. Which is just as well, because it may have been catastrophic. So I left it dangling. Enjoying its superfluousness. And one would have to say that everything seems to work. So I think that's the job done. So, uh, of course, uh, I probably didn't cover everything. I didn't cover uh, blinkers or indicators, because I haven't got any. Um, but they're fairly simple, uh, in the same way as the lights, the rest of the lights were. Uh, if you've got new LED units that have their own pulse in you'll probably need to change something in the actual settings on your phone so that the M unit sends a, com a complete signal rather than a pulsing signal uh, otherwise you've got all kinds of weird and wonderful settings in there for indicators if you thought the video was uh, at all helpful uh, or entertaining even at any point um, please give it a thumbs up it's very important do appreciate that uh, if you haven't already please subscribe down here somewhere uh, there's plenty of other custom bike builds and all kinds of other things going on a uh, 24 hours at lemons car porsche 944 with a chevy small block there's a lancia stratus replica for those of you with a little bit more refined taste and um oh yes world's fastest bumper car don't forget that and there it is uh, and of course um, encourage others to watch my lunacy